Hey, what's going on guys? It's DB Tech here, back for another video. And today I've got something juicy for you. And, uh, oh, it's pricey. I, oh, I'm broke. I'm, I'm definitely broke on this one. Let me introduce you to my new laptop, the Dell XPS 9570. So I know a lot of you found me from my Alienware laptop review. Well, we're doing it again. We have a new laptop. Also, if any of you are in desktops, definitely consider subscribing because we just went through buying my friend Jordan a PC, like all the parts to build a PC, and I'm actually going to be doing a video on that in hopefully a month or two, once all the parts get here, on how to actually go through building a custom gaming PC. So his will be dedicated towards gaming, and hopefully soon I'll be doing one with mine dedicated towards video editing. So, if any of those interest you, definitely consider subscribing. So a lot of you found my channel, I believe, from the Alienware laptop review I did, which was a good laptop, loved it, got me through college, plus while I've been the game, I have toy gaming, but about a year ago, I ended up selling it to my friend Aaron. A, because I initially didn't really, I basically didn't even use that laptop that much anymore after I graduated college, and two, because frankly, I was selling it to a friend, and honestly, if I ever needed it back for like a, two weeks, I could get it back from him. I actually did get it back from him for like a week. Probably should have gotten it back from him for this video, but I didn't. Fast forward a year later, I want another laptop. But I don't want something that big, but I still need that much power. Now granted, I don't game as much as I used to, Mostly, t most of the time, if I'm gaming, it's on my Xbox or on my Nintendo Switch. So my priority from, for a laptop shifted from can it game to can I edit 4K videos on this as I got a GH4 camera that shoots 4K now. I actually have two of them. Plus, I'm starting it as I'm running my video production company. I need something that can handle that much processing power. And as we all know, anyone that runs a business. I need something that can export videos faster than anything, because time is money. So I was in the market looking for a laptop that I could actually be a laptop, but also still had the power to back, back up what I needed to. Well, in a lot of my research, it came down to two contenders, the Dell XPS and the Razer, Bl Razer Blade 15. There was the MacBook, but but frankly, for the specs I needed, it ended up being like $3,500 to $4,000. And I said, <laughs> no, because I don't have that money. I'd have to get a small loan, and I'm not doing that. Well, as we can all tell, I ended up with the Dell XPS 15 9570. They recently released the 7590, I believe. The only thing they really refreshed with it was basically 10th gen Intel graphics, which this came with either 8th gen or 9th gen, and I was fine with that. I'm okay with that, because um, from what I, from all the testing I've seen, the improvements wasn't that much. Also, if you're wondering what this is, this is a uh, SSD, a portable SSD that I use. Um, it's basically what stores all my larger files. I actually have a second one of these that's one terabyte in the other room. Great for video editing, by the way. Now, before I say anything else, I'm just going to let you know what the specs are. This has an Intel i7-8750H, which is a 6-core 12-thread processor. It can turbo up to 4.1, but in my but in my experience, it mostly stays around the 3 to 3.8. Um, by the time you start getting everything work, working with full power. It has a GTX 1050 Ti as a graphics processor, and it also has, and, it all, and I also got mine equipped with 500 gigabytes of solid state storage, which the good news is about this laptop, just like the Alienware, I can undo these screws, and I can get in, I can upgrade everything myself. Not the graphics card and the CPU, but I can at least get in and upgrade the graphics and the Wi-Fi card as if I ever needed to. Also, this has 16 gigabytes of RAM, but I can get in here and I'll probably do that soon and upgrade this to about 32. That being said, let's go over the feel of this laptop and it's... It feels nice. 
It is majority aluminum, a aluminum body with a rubber coated inside, which is carbon fiber, if I'm not mistaken. So it's very elegant, very elegant laptop here. So the laptop feels great. I believe overall it weighs around four pounds, which is compared to my Alienware is nothing. I believe it's three and a half to four pounds. And on top of that, look at this. This is the power brick for this laptop. It's basically nothing compared to Alienware that was, at minimum, that. Or, and like, up here. So, also, the Alienware's was a lot more dense. Now, as far as the port situation on this laptop goes, it's not as good as my Alienware was, or as my Alienware had SD cards, three USB 3s, plus a USB C, plus an HDMI. And another big port it had for me was the Ethernet deck, built-in Ethernet. I run a lot of my stuff wired as half the time when I'm doing uploads. My upload speed is a little more important, so I can actually get a little bit more upload speed on most networks I'm on if I just hardwire in. Unfortunately, on the Dell XPS, it does not have an Ethernet jack, so I had to go be a part of dongle life and I bought me an Amazon Basics adapter for Ethernet. So sad, but what are you going to do? But the XPS is still fairly generous, generous with his ports. It has two USB 3s, a USB C which doubles as Thunderbolt, does still have an SD card slot, and a microphone input. Honestly, for most laptops these days, that's still fairly good. Of course, it does still use like the proprietary connector that Dell uses and all that, so it does require a 115 watt power brick, so still a little bit more than the MacBook, MacBook would use, like so you could use USB-C charging. I'm not entirely sure if I ever figured out if the Dell can accept USB-C power. I believe it can, but I could be wrong. Now once we get to the inside of the laptop, the first thing you'll notice is the beautiful screen. Mine actually came equipped with a 4K, which is a 3840 by 2160 resolution touch screen that is IPS. Fun fact, when I was shopping for this laptop, I believe they typically sell for around $1,300. I found a listing on eBay for $960. But it, it listed the specs, but it didn't list what the screen was. And I originally wanted a 4K touch screen because I was like, 4K touch, that touch feature will actually be really nice. Granted, I can live without it. Well, paid $960 for the laptop, got it in. Turns out it was the 4K touch screen and I was wrong. I cannot live without it. I like to be able to touch my screen apparently. It's really just nice and simple, especially if you're laying on the couch, just scrolling through a web page, you can just use your thumb and just scroll and scroll and scroll. It's nice! Now as we travel down the laptop, the next thing you'll see is the keyboard. It is actually a fairly good keyboard, very tactile. I love, I love typing on this. The only thing I love typing on this more is my mechanical keyboard for my desktop. Now that being said, I do find this keyboard an improvement over the Alienware. Compared to the Alienware, it made it made the bigger laptop feel almost mushy. Like, the keyboard wasn't bad by any means, but it, this keyboard just feels a lot more rigid and stern, I guess you could say, as, that, as the whole chassis for this laptop is very, very enforced, but not built like a tank like the Alienware. Now granted, the Alienware felt like I could hit somebody over the head and keep going, and my laptop would have been fine. The Dell doesn't feel quite that that sturdy, but it's close, very close. And next on the laptop, you find the trackpad. The trackpad is a very good trackpad. Honestly, the only other trackpad I've used better than that has been from a MacBook. And we all know, unfortunately, MacBooks take the prize when it comes to trackpads. Now, the new XPS 15 they came out with I believe also improved their trackpad again but from what I've heard the trackpad still isn't as good as the MacBook Pro and this trackpad is an improvement over my the Alienware. So yes the looks are an improvement but how does it perform? Exceptional if I must say so myself. 
I actually ended up exporting a video and my desktop, my desktop and my Dell always had very similar numbers because both of them always had a 4 core 8 thread processor. So a lot of the export times I was concerned with was I've been doing a lot of work with my church and as I've been doing work, work with my church, we've been doing a lot of pre-recorded services. So I've been recording, start recording like a hour long service. I put it all on the timeline, sync up the audio, chop off the ends, do a little transition and export it out. Now, typically my desktop will take an hour long top timeline or an hour long service and it will export it in about 45 minutes between 30 to 45 minutes depending. My Dell on the other hand has been able to take take that same service and export it between 15 and 25 minutes. Now I've been able to export a regular video, granted that was in 4K, and export it between 5 and 5, 10 and 15 minutes depending on the length of the video. I will take that improvement any day of the week because anything that saves me 20 to 30 minutes I don't have to wait for my computer to sit there and do something, it's great. And on top of that, when I export on my desktop, it pegs the CPU to 100%. In my experience with my laptop, when I export, it doesn't completely peg the CPU. It, it does more like 60% utilization compared to 60 to 80% utilization compared to my desktop which means I can still do other things. With, it doesn't completely cripple my system if I try to do something else. And, yeah, and another way it performs even better is in the timeline. Because I edit in Premiere Pro, when I edit a 4K project on a 4K timeline, in my, on my desktop, what I have to do is make proxies. Because if I try to play back 4K in real time, even at half to quarter resolution drop, most of the time I can't, it's too laggy. Even if I jump somewhere, it takes the desktop a minute to catch up. So half the time I just, it's almost better to just make a proxy, which then takes time to render because you have to go on render out proxies. But on my laptop, I can actually just plug in and directly edit 4K footage at full to half resolution with almost no frame drops. And as long since like running off an SSD, that also removes a lot of my bottleneck also. Now granted, when I've done a lot of these tests, this was before the new Premiere update, which allows a little bit more GPU acceleration. I did all this testing and Premiere ruined it. Adobe ruined it. But honestly, GPU acceleration means faster processing times, faster export times. I'll take whatever I can get. So overall, I feel like my laptop is a major improvement I'm really enjoying this laptop. I feel like this will last me for a couple years. It should, it better. If it doesn't, then we're, we're gonna have a big problem. But anyway, you guys, if you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. If you didn't, you know where that button's at. So consider subscribing, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.